I'm Rob Keeley, and today, or tonight, or whenever you're watching this, we're going to be launching my new book, The Treasure in the Tower. Now, uh, normally when I launch a book, I like to give it a good send-off, so I was planning a big launch, brass band, fireworks, invite the mayor, sign masses of copies. But then there was another lockdown, so you've got me in my little studio at home. So what we're going to do is share an extract from the book together, then I'll tell you where you can find the book, and hopefully on the night this is posted, I'll be doing a Q&A, uh, a question and answer session, on Twitter. So, as we join the story, in Chapter 2, Jess, her brother Mason, and their friend Cassie are on a school trip. They're going to the city of Deanchester. They're stopping off on the journey for lunch. Uh, Jess has been with Cassie and their not-so-friend Perdita to visit a market, where they've visited a fortune teller, who's told them they're going to become very rich. Now they've met up with Perdita's sidekick, Thomas, at a bookstore. And here's where we pick up the tale. Like fantasy, do you? The bookman asked. Got one here you might be interested in. He picked up a battered paperback book and handed it to Jess. It had a black cover and gold lettering that said, The Lost Treasure of Deanchester. Jess stared at it. So did Cassie. Then Perdita snatched it. Oi! Jess turned and glared at her. Perdita looked at the front cover. The Lost Treasure of Deanchester by Dr. Joseph Pyrite. Hey! Cassie laughed. It's our fortune! Perdita quickly read from the back cover. Before his death in 1994, wow, that's ancient, local historian Dr. Joseph Pyrite scattered clues in and around the city of Deanchester which will lead the clever and the cunning to a hidden treasure. Untold wealth awaits those with the knowledge to solve his riddles. She looked at the left-hand page in the front. This is a reprint. Came out in 2001. So no one had found the treasure by then anyway. Perhaps they never did. A hidden treasure? Jess blinked. In Deanchester? Perdita stepped over to the bookman. How much? Hey, hang on! The bookman laughed and pointed to Jess. I think this young lady had it first. She didn't say she wanted it, though, did she? Well, I do. Jess stepped nearer. Well, you didn't say so. Well, I do. Well, tough. Perdita, don't be mean. I can pay for it. Well, so can I. It's only a pound. Look. Have you got another one? Cassie asked. The bookman shook his head. Only this one. Probably out of print by now. Jess glared at Perdita. It looked as if the fortune teller had been right. They were already in competition. Only one way to solve this. The bookman reached across the stall and took the paper back. Right, both of you, stand back. Get ready. I'm going to chuck it in the air. First one that grabs it, gets it. Right. Perdita stood back. She had the air of someone about to take a penalty for England. Jess gave her an uneasy look. Perdita could easily win. She had spent her life grabbing what she wanted. OK. The bookman held the book out. The things I do to make a sale. So, one, two, three, go! He threw the book upward. At the same moment, Thomas spoke. Can't we share it? Perdita looked away, just long enough. Jess leapt up and caught the book. Got it! Perdita gave a howl. That's not fair! She went over and gave Thomas a shove, sending him staggering into detective novels. You idiot! Now look what you've done! Bad luck, Perdita. Jess reached into her pocket for a pound. It looked as if she were going to become poorer before she became richer. Never mind. If you're very good, I'll let you share the book and the treasure. Perdita didn't look as if she wanted to share anything. She was fuming quietly. Mason appeared with Ollie and Aziz. They all had their faces around doughnuts. What's happening? Mr. Andrade came walking over to them from the other direction. There you are. Ten minutes, Miss Tillotson said. You've been nearly half an hour. If you don't get back on the coach now. There was no time to think any more about the treasure. Jess quickly thanked the bookman, put the book inside her jacket, and headed off with the others back to the car park. They found everyone else on the coach. Miss Tillotson gave Mr. Andrade a look, and they all scattered to their seats. What's going on? Mason asked again. 
Jess took out the book and gave it to him. The lost what? He looked towards the front of the coach, grinning. Never mind. Tell me after. I don't want to miss this. What? Jess followed his eyes towards the front seats. Before we got off the coach, I left a jam buzzy, just for Perdita. There was a loud squelch as Perdita sat down next to Thomas. She froze. Several of the boys were tittering. Slowly, Perdita stood up and removed a piece of bread and jam from the seat of her jodpers. Jess struggled not to join in the laughter. Her evil twin had struck again. Mason! Miss Tillotson stood in the aisle. Oh dear. Mason was laughing so hard it was obvious who was behind the trick. How dare you! When we get to the hostel, I've a good mind to make you stay behind for all the trips. Now say sorry to Perdita. Mason muttered something which could have been sorry. Jess looked at Perdita. In seconds, Perdita's face went from angry to thoughtful to very sly. Then it changed to hurt. It's not fair, miss. He's been nasty to me all through lunchtime. He even took my book, the one I bought in the market. Look! Mason! Miss Tillotson went over and saw the lost treasure of Dean Chester. If we were at school, I'd put you in detention. Now give that book to me. But... Jess sat forward. Miss! Now, Mason! Mason handed the book over. Miss Tillotson went to the front and gave it to Perdita. She gave another of the sweet smiles she kept for teachers. Thank you, miss. Only when Miss Tillotson had turned away did Perdita give Jess and Mason a look that said, Suckers! She went back to sit in her jammy seat. Jess gave Mason a glare. He looked bewildered. What do I do? The coach drove on. Soon they were on the A9027, heading towards Deanchester. But Jess wasn't enjoying the trip any more. She was thinking about the treasure and watching Perdita. Jess saw her showing the book to Thomas and whispering. Thomas was looking through the pages. If anyone could find a secret treasure, it would be those two. Thomas was clever and Perdita was cunning. The fortune teller had been so right about that girl. Jess reached into her pocket and brought out her phone. It was time she found out more about Dr. Joseph Pyrite. 